senior research scientist at NVIDIA, Dr. Jim Fan, just dropped his TED Talk. And in it, he describes what is likely to be the future of AGI. But it's not just AGI. This is AGI for the real world with robotic embodiment. It is absolutely mind-blowing. Let's watch. In the spring of 2016, I was sitting in a classroom at Columbia University, but wasn't paying attention to the lecture. Instead, I was watching a board game tournament on my laptop. It wasn't just any tournament, but a very, very special one. The match was between AlphaGo and Lee Sido. The AI has just won three out of five games and became the first ever to beat a human champion at a game of Go. I still remember the adrenaline of seeing history unfold that day. The glory moment when AI agents finally entered the mainstream. But when the excitement fades, I realized that as mighty as AlphaGo was, it could only do one thing and one thing alone. It isn't able to play any other games, like Super Mario or Minecraft. And it certainly cannot do a dirty laundry or cook a nice dinner for you tonight. But what we truly want are AI agents as versatile as Wally, -E, as diverse as all the robot body forms or embodiments in Star Wars, and works across infinite realities, virtual or physical, as in Ready Player One. So how can we achieve these science fictions in possibly the near future. Dr. Jim Fan is a renowned research scientist working at NVIDIA, and what he's describing here is when he first saw AlphaGo, a project out of DeepMind from Google, created artificial intelligence to beat humans at the game Go, which is a very complex game. And for years, people did not think it was going to happen. But then, AlphaGo was able to do it. And for Jim Fan, it was a turning point in his life. But what he's setting up here is the fact that AlphaGo could only do one thing, and that is play Go. So let's keep watching and see where he's going with this. This is a practitioner's guide towards generally capable AI agents. Most of the ongoing research efforts can be laid out nicely across three axes. The number of skills an agent can do, the body forms or embodiments it can control, and the realities it can master. AlphaGo is somewhere here, but the upper right corner is where we need to go. So let's take it one access at a time. Earlier this year, I led the Voyager project, which is an agent that scales up massively on a number of skills. And there's no game better than Minecraft. So what he's talking about is the Voyager research paper. And let me show that to you. So this is the Voyager research project that he's referencing. And here's his name right there. And in fact, I made a video about this research paper because it was so incredible. And what Voyager was, was the first time where we actually saw AI agents using tools. And not only using tools, but creating and saving their own tools. And now all of the modern AI agent projects can do exactly Exactly this, but this is the first time I've seen it. And let's take a look at that accomplishment quickly in one graph. So what you're seeing here is the Minecraft tech tree. So basically, the more you play Minecraft, the more you advance your skills in Minecraft, you start to be able to create different and more complex items within the game. Now, what you can see with traditional machine learning from React and Reflection, they learn a little bit and then it plateaus pretty quickly. Then Auto GPT came out and Auto GPT, I believe was the first time where we actually saw agents backed by ChatGPT and it did pretty well. It was able to go pretty far. And then Voyager came and that's Voyager without skill library, which was much more developed for the specific use of Minecraft. And with really intelligent prompting, it was able to craft and progress through Minecraft to a pretty far degree. And then at a certain point it plateaued. Now with Voyager, as you could see here, it progressed and then just kept on progressing and there was no limit as to how much it can learn. And the reason it was able to do that is ingenious. 
Look at this. So this is the gist of how Voyager works. It has an automatic curriculum which it creates for itself. Then as it's trying to do things within the game, let's say make a crafting table, combat a zombie, mine diamonds, it will create code to accomplish that task. And in this example, you're seeing combat zombie. It will test the code. If it fails, it'll revise its own code and iteratively do it until it accomplishes that task. Then it saves that tool, that skill in a library for future use. And so all of a sudden you have this deep skill library that the agent can pull from, which not only makes the agent much more efficient in terms of number of tokens being used, but it's also able to progress much further in the game because it has all of these skills. I'll drop the link to my full video reviewing this research paper in the description below. Let's keep watching. And there's no game better than Minecraft for the infinite creative things it supports. And here's a fun fact for all of you. Minecraft has 140 million active players. And just to put that number in perspective, it's more than twice the population of the UK. And Minecraft is so insanely popular because it's open-ended. It does not have a fixed storyline for you to follow, and you can do whatever your heart desires in the game. And when we set Voyager free in Minecraft, we see that it's able to play the game for hours on end without any human intervention. The video here shows snippets from a single episode of Voyager, where it just keeps going. It can explore the terrains, mine all kinds of materials, fight monsters, craft hundreds of recipes, and unlock an ever-expanding tree of skills. So what's the magic? The core insight is coding as action. First, we convert the 3D world into a textual representation using a Minecraft JavaScript API made by the enthusiastic community. Voyager invokes GPT-4 to write code snippets in JavaScript that become executable skills in the game. Yet, just like human engineers, Voyager makes mistakes. It isn't always able to get a program correct on the first try, so we add a self-reflection mechanism for it to improve. So the self-reflection mechanism that he's describing here has been widely documented in research papers, in agent projects. It is very successful at improving itself. All of the modern AI agent projects from Crew AI to Autogen to AutoGPT, they all contain this functionality and it works well. It allows agents to iteratively improve their own code, including tools that they use. And this technique far outpaces the ability of a single LLM. There are three sources of feedback for the self-reflection, the JavaScript code execution error, the agent state, like health and hunger, and a world state, like terrains and enemies nearby. So Voyager takes an action, observes the consequences of its action on the world and on itself, reflects on how it can possibly do better, try out some new action plans, and rinse and repeat. And once the skill becomes mature, Voyager saves it to a skill library as a persistent memory. You can think of the skill library as a code repository returned entirely by a language model. And in this way, Voyager is able to bootstrap its own capabilities recursively as it explores and experiments in Minecraft. Now, what he's describing with the skill library and a growing set of skills that an AI agent can pull from is what I believe will lead to AGI, amongst other things, obviously, such as long-term memory, the ability to pull real-time information, and much better models. So let's work through an example together. Voyager finds itself hungry. It needs to get food as soon as possible. It senses four entities nearby, a cat, a villager, a pig, and some wheat seeds. Voyager starts an inner monologue. Do I uh, kill the cat or villager for food? Horrible idea. How about the wheat seed? I can grow a farm out of the seeds, but that's going to take a long time. So sorry, piggy, you are the chosen one. And Voyager finds a piece of iron in its inventory, so it recalls an old skill from the library to craft an iron sword and starts to learn a new skill called Hunt Pig. And now we also know that, unfortunately, Voyager isn't vegetarian. <laughs> One question still remains. How does Voyager keep exploring indefinitely? We only give it a high-level directive. That is to obtain as many unique items as possible. And Voyager implements a curriculum to find 
progressively harder and more novel challenges to solve all by itself. Now you can think of this almost as multiple agents, although what he's describing seems like a single agent. One agent is creating the overall curriculum. Another agent is executing specific tasks and creating and saving individual skills to accomplish those tasks. This is why I am such a big believer in AI agents and AI agent teams. Putting all these together, Voyager is able to not only master, but also discover new skills along the way. And we did not pre-program any of this. It's all Voyager's idea. And this, what you see here, is what we call lifelong learning, where an agent is forever curious and forever pursuing new adventures. Compared to AlphaGo, Voyager scales up massively on the number of things it can do, but still controls only one body in Minecraft. So the question is, can we have an algorithm that works across many different bodies? Enters Metamorph. It is an initiative I co-developed at Stanford. We created a foundation model that can control not just one, but thousands of robots with very different arm and leg configurations. Metamorph is able to handle extremely varied kinematic characteristics from different robot bodies. And this is the intuition on how we create a metamorph. First, we design a special vocabulary to describe the body parts so that every robot body is basically a sentence written in the language of this vocabulary. And then we just apply a transformer to it, much like ChatGPT. But instead of writing out text, Metamorph writes out motor controls. Now, last year, Microsoft published a paper, which I think went under the radar a little bit, but essentially what they did is they were able to control different robotic embodiments with ChatGPT. They essentially gave it a library of commands to control those different objects. So for example, a drone, and then they used ChatGPT with natural language to describe what they want the drone to do. ChatGPT then took that natural language, converted it into the commands necessary to actually execute the task using the robot robotic commands. So this isn't the first time we've seen something like this, but it is fascinating that Jim Fan and team took it to another level. We show that Metamorph is able to control thousands of robots to go upstairs, cross difficult terrains, and avoid obstacles. Extrapolating into the future, if we can greatly expand this robot vocabulary, I envision Metamorph 2.0 we'll be able to generalize to robot hands, humanoids, dogs, drones, and even beyond. Compared to Voyager, Metamorph takes a big stride towards multi-body control. And now, let's take everything one level further and transfer the skills and embodiments across realities. Enters Isaac Sim, NVIDIA's simulation effort. Before I show the rest of that clip, which is mind blowing, let's just talk about where we are so far. So initially we had AlphaGo. It was very, very good at doing one thing, and that was playing Go. Then we had Voyager, which was a research paper published last year that had a ton of skills, but only one embodiment. And that just basically means it can play within the world of Minecraft. Then we had Metamorph, which didn't have a lot of skills, but it could be applied to different embodiments, whether it was virtual or different types of robots. And that was super impressive. Now what they are proposing from NVIDIA and Jim Fan is Isaac Sim, which takes the best of both worlds and puts them together. All of the skills plus all of the embodiments. And if this is not what is inevitably going to be AGI, I don't know what is. Let's keep watching. The biggest strength of Isaac Sim is to accelerate physics simulation to a thousand X faster than real time. For example, this character here learns some impressive martial arts by going through 10 years of intense training in only three days of simulation time. So it's very much like the virtual sparring dojo in the movie Matrix. And this car racing scene is where simulation has crossed the uncanny valley. Thanks to hardware-accelerated ray tracing, we're able to render extremely complex scenes with breathtaking levels of details. And this photorealism you see here will help us train computer vision models that will become the eyes of every AI agent. 
And what's more, Isaac Sim can procedurally generate worlds with infinite variations so that no two look the same. Wow, did he just drop so much cool stuff to what he is saying Isaac Sim is. Not only can it operate within any embodiment, but it actually has the ability to generate worlds that are photorealistic in unlimited variation and train the agents within those worlds. So if you have a virtual world that is nearly a pixel perfect representation of the real world that a robot is trained on, when we actually transfer that knowledge into a real world robot, it already knows how to operate within that real world because of that training. So here's an interesting idea. If an agent is able to master 10,000 simulations, then it may very well just generalize to our real physical world, which is simply the 10,000 and first reality. All right, now he's getting into simulation theory. And I tend to believe in it. And for those of you who are not aware, simulation theory is that we are living in a simulation ourselves. And it kind of makes sense. Looking at the progress of computing over the last 50 years and what we're able to simulate within computer environments today is pretty stunning. Now, if it continues to improve at the rate that it has been, at a certain point, the simulation is gonna become so real, we are not gonna be able to tell the difference between the simulation and the real world. And at that point, the real world is just a simulation. And this is what Elon Musk and many other thought leaders believe as well. And let that sink in. As we progress through this map, we will eventually get to the upper right corner, which is a single agent that generalizes across all three axes. And that is the foundation agent. I believe training foundation agent, I believe training foundation agent will be very similar to ChatGPT. All language tasks can be expressed as text in and text out, be it writing poetry, translating English to Spanish, or coding Python, it's all the same. And ChatGPT simply scales this up massively across lots and lots of data. It's the same principle. The foundation agent takes as input an embodiment prompt and a task prompt and output actions. And we train it by simply scaling it up massively across lots and lots of realities. I believe in a future where everything that moves will eventually be autonomous. And one day, we will realize that all the AI agents across WALL-E, Star Wars, Ready Player One, no matter if they are in the physical or virtual spaces, will all just be different prompts to the same foundation agent. And that, my friends, will be the next grand challenge in our quest for AI. Thanks. Now he talked about Metamorph. Let's take a look at some videos showing off the training and how they actually accomplished Metamorph.
and it seems Jim Fan and the team at NVIDIA have been working on this problem for a while now. A few months ago, Jim Fan posted this on X. Can GPT-4 teach a robot hand to do pen spinning tricks better than you do? I'm excited to announce Eureka, an open-ended agent that designs reward functions for robot dexterity at superhuman level. It's like Voyager in the space of a physics simulator API. Eureka bridges the gap between high-level reasoning, coding, and low-level motor control. It is a hybrid gradient architecture. A black box inference only LLM instructs a white box learnable neural network. And here he already references Isaac Jim, which is a GPU accelerated physics simulator that speeds up reality by 1000 times. Now continue with that. What if they're able to speed up reality by 10,000, 100,000, a million times, where we are having pixel perfect simulations of the real world, again, calling back to simulation theory. On a benchmark suite of 29 tasks across 10 robots, Eureka Rewards outperform expert handwritten ones on 83% of the tasks by 52% improvement margin on average. We are surprised that Eureka is able to learn pen spinning tricks, which are very difficult even for CGI artists to animate frame by frame. Now that is fascinating. What he's describing has ramifications in the media world and movies and TV shows. If anybody can just write a prompt and have CGI generated that is exactly what you're describing without the need for for visual artists, I bet everybody's gonna be able to create their own animations. And he drops the paper and the code open sourced right here. So I'll drop all of these links in the description below. So what do you think? Is this AGI? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.